So, what was the objective of this project? The objective was to build almost a, an aircraft or an, rather an aircraft flight control surface which has got provision of you know fail-safe feature where the control surface can be operated by mechanical means as you can see here it has got all the mechanical connections it can be operated by pneumatic means you can see here it has got the pneumatic means it can be operated by electrical means as well and you can see the students down there working on the electrical parts so the purpose was to show the students in future how the control surface operates that was the initial idea and I thought of uh, doing this project with this student because it would give some value to the uh, you know to the entire understanding as well as to the entire objective of Nila University and their objective of their study as well. Now that was the sole objective. How was it achieved? So it was achieved within a period of 14 weeks and uh, every week officially we had two hours of class so two hours into 20, uh, 14 weeks is 28 hours so within 20 hours you can see here the aircraft is almost ready so with a shoestring budget of 3.5k and with the 28 hours officially so unofficially I took whenever I think whenever you people got time you did uh, work at all your leisure time at your free time and that is why you could finish up the entire thing within uh, this time frame which is uh, no quite a great job now what was my role I was the supervisor for this project I dreamt of I conceptualized this entire idea of, of building the aircraft from scratch and the students put that uh, you know, concept into reality, the dream into reality. Now, what it serves and what was the final outcome and what we can conclude by the entire thing? Well, I can conclude that an almost an aircraft without the landing gear can be made possible. That means if given the time and opportunity with the proper resources, all of these students can do wonders so i would request you if you are going through the video to have a look at the potential of the students and give these people the opportunity to prove themselves now why is it essential and what was the final outcome of the entire thing my objective as i told you i was the supervisor but i never did anything i just gave them free hand free mind and they did you know the, all the creativity and the innovation and finally they managed to get and achieve the objective so what it proves it proves that if given the opportunity the free mind the creativity and the innovation comes in so innovation and creativity comes with free mind so what we require is free mind and the bottom line is every one of us can do wonders provided we are given the, uh, the the responsibility to do that and to end this entire discussion what you require is innovative mind and creative mind and that's all it is essential so all these students did wonderful job and I would rather as I told you I appeal all these uh, subscriber watching the video and who in future uh, will be watching this video to give the students the adequate uh, support so that uh, they can contribute to the society at large by large and uh, okay best of luck for your future thank you i'm uh, dr louis uh, timajo is the coordinator of aircraft maintenance department under of uh, school of engineering technology right now uh, the subject, uh, final project has been done by the uh, group that uh, doing their planning and then uh, performing the tasks on the on the flight sim uh, the flight control simulator. Okay, so now uh, I'm here behind of the prototype of a simulation of the aircraft, and I see that uh, all these uh, projects are very good for them to. Uh, Exposed on the 
how the flight control and also the electrical wiring uh, sense the uh, on and off of flight control if you are down or up position. Okay, so I acknowledge the lecturer, Mr. Saikat, uh, initiative to uh, do the final project and also with the assistance of uh, Mr. Nasaruddin uh, doing well to assist the student while the lecturer is not around. It's uh, very good, uh, well, on the exposed the student regarding the uh, system of the aircraft. Hi, my name is Nazaruddin Bihamdi. I'm the hangout officer for Nila University Aircraft Department. My role in this project is to guide the student throughout the entire process of building the aircraft simulator. Although I'm MBA majoring in aviation management and also an aircraft engineering graduate with more than 15 years experience in aircraft engineering, I shouldn't directly put my hands on building the project. As a certified vocational training officer by the government, what I need to do is closely monitor them, then actively providing tips and advice. This is to drive the student to apply what they have learned and use their own skill in building this aircraft simulator. I show them the proper way of using tools and equipment and the best engineering practice. In some point when they facing a problem, I will lead a discussion to drive their critical thinking on solving the problem. I use an analogy and sometimes explain multiple options for them to choose. Thank you. and this is my team. So we are in charge for fabrication. So this is the new discussion. Um, my name is Nadira. I'm Kutra. I'm Aiman. And I'm Oliver. So for my part, I'm going to talk about the design. So basically our design is very simple and a very basic uh, design. So we refer the internet to get a picture in our head. Then we started to sketch what we wanted our aircraft to look like. We also put in the measurement. So as you can see, we have a box-like shape for the middle part of the aircraft. And then we have the wing, which is slightly swept back. So the flap, aileron, elevator and rudder are referred from the beach jet in our aircraft. I mean in our hangar itself. Okay. So we had to communicate with all the other uh, team members because we need to know how much of space they require for their own component and also if they require any specific shape for the installation of their components. So this can avoid any problems from happening when we start to proceed with our project. So this planning stage is a crucial stage because it's the startup of this project. If we don't plan properly, there is going to be problem later on so we have to know the precise information from all the members so that we will not have any problem later when we proceed. Um, at first, we gathered um, the information and made a rough budget list according to the materials and parts that are needed to make this mock aircraft. Then we decided that each student, which are 21 of us, um, we collected 200 ringgit each and collected them in the first week to cover up all the expenses for this mock aircraft. Then the materials needed to construct the structure of this aircraft was mainly hollow square bars, um, rectangle, hollow rectangular bars, brackets and self-driven screws. Next we did research on where to obtain these, of these materials and how to obtain, obtain them. Later on, we found that there's this supplier near Nilai where they provide metal bars and we ordered from them and they, uh, we had them delivered to the hangar. As for the brackets and the self drilling screw, we bought them from a local hardware store. To assemble the structure into the mock aircraft, the equipments and the tools we used were from the workshop at the hangar itself. 
Um, at the end of the project, we made an account statement which tally up the the money that we used to buy all these materials and the money that we collected from each student. At the end of the day, all everything was everything went well and everything was in the budget that we planned. Okay, so the materials used for the project that we built have to be strong and relatively lightweight. So we have nine one by one inch, uh, six meter beam, square beams made of mild steel and it is 1.6 mm in thickness. We also have 12 one inch by two inches, uh, six meter rectangular beams, which is also used for the structure. For the control panel and uh, control surfaces, we used aluminum sheets, which are 0.6 mm thickness and we use 1.0 mm thickness aluminum sheets for the control surfaces. For the installation part, with the reference of the design, we built an A-frame structure of the aircraft by using a hollow, hollow square steel, hollow rectangle steel. We use machine to cut the hollow square steel and also the rectangle steel. Air bracket I use this one. The bracket are used behind to ease the job for the welding. We use pneumatic gun to drill the air bracket into place. After that, we use welding to secure the steel, the structure based on the design. For the aileron and the flap, we first draw an aerofoil sheet on the metal sheet and then copy it into six pieces. We cut using a nibbler to make all the six pieces uh, the same. And then we take another metal sheet, we use a metal sheet uh, bending machine and a rubber mallet to bend the metal sheet into an aerofoil shape. Installing the flaps and the aileron is easy, we just uh, secure the bearing into place and install the flaps. Next, to install the first body of the aircraft, we use 4x4 four four feet aluminium metal sheet and cut it using metal sheet cutting. We bend the small part of the top and bottom and then secure with the pneumatic gun and drill the bottom first and then the top. So now, now is the problem we face and how we overcome it. So at first, we had difficulty on how to design the aircraft structure as it requires a lot of measurements and calculations. And we were also being given a limited space to do our project. So that uh, we decided to do the design uh, as fit as the space provided. Okay, next, when we were building our aircraft structure, we faced multiple problems such as insufficient parts and materials. The budget we had also was very limited and we decided to use it very efficiently. To overcome this, we try uh, we design our aircraft by modifying it and we use all the reused materials that we found in the hangar that was once used by our seniors. Lack of skills was also the problems when activities such as welding and drilling need to be done. So we need all like the skills to do to make sure that the program the project is run smoothly and it is done to be last long. Hi everyone, my name is Steven. I'm the team leader of this project, also the group leader of the mechanical team. So now let me introduce my team member first. Hello, my name is Leon. My name is Chong Hong Meng. My name is Dan Hao. My name is Bu Kakin. In this project, our group is responsible to making the primary flight control system. What is the primary flight control system? Primary flight control system consists of aileron, rudder, and elevator. Movement of the three primary flight control surfaces will change the airflow and pressure distribution over around the airflow. This change uh, will affect the lift and the drag produced by the airflow or control surface combination around the pilot to control the aircraft about the three axis of rotation. After that, 
our design is using the mechanical mechanism which is control cable to control the movement of the primary flight control surface and then the air elevator and the aileron we use the dual yoke which is the design the mock design from the boeing 737 and the rudder we controlled by the rudder pedal so uh, after we collect all the information and the reference we start to prepare all the structure doing after we done the, all the social doing, we start to prepare our resources. Okay, now I'm going to explain how and where we found out our resource. We use two methods uh, to find our resource that is through online and through offline. Uh, in online, we use uh, WhatsApp and email. In WhatsApp, it's easy to gather information uh, from the supplier, mostly about the quotation, price and picture and for the email part we re receive quotation and pictures from there also okay from offline method uh, we go meet the supplier face to face we know that uh, the price and we can negotiate with them and we also can hear their suggestion about our project most our project our part that they will give us uh, about their opinion. I will explain about how we install the primary flight control surface. For the yoke, we have two handles that is sandwiched by two boards to increase the strength. Then, all, all the control surface are pulled by the steel cable rope. The steel cable rope is co connected to a turnbuckle, then connect to the chain. The turnbuckle is for tension of the cable. The chain is fixed to the gear so that it can be pulled by the yoke. All the steel cable rope will go through the pulley to ensure the pilot have to decrease the effort to pull the control surface. So for the aileron and elevator, we use double sprocket gear so that the, when the gear moves, both the aileron and elevator will move together. So the aileron is what like when the pilot moves the yoke to the left, Cable will pull the aileron move to the up. Both aileron and elevator will move together. For the rudder, we have rudder pedal. When the pilot step the left pedal, the rudder will move to the left. Yeah, that's all. Okay, now the problem we faced in this project is we lack lack of time and we have not enough tools to finish our project. We also lack of manpower because some of our member is have different class schedules with us so we had to make the same time to work with them. The hardest situation we face during this project is we lack of communication during working and had to find our projects, material and resources. We special time to overcome the time shortage and other members also help us to complete our parts. If there is no one, this project is impossible to become. We also try our best to finish all the tasks with good communication skills because communication is the main key of how to solve the problems within the time. But what we have gained in this project is that we learn how to work in a team and also to solve the personal disputes. And we also gain uh, extra knowledge, uh, mostly in using various types of tools such as uh, writing machine, Cutting machine, uh, branch grinder, and drilling machine. No, not only that, we also gain extra knowledge of the book. Uh, for example, that uh, we uh, we know how the primary flight, con flight control system works after we build the project. Hello, everyone. My name is Donovan. I'm the pneumatics team leader for this aircraft mock-up project. These are they are my team members who work together with me. Upon completing this final year project. Hi, my name is Mugen. Hi, my name is Fong. Hi, my name is Divish. And I'm Kelvin. For this project, our team is responsible in constructing two of the secondary flight control system, which are the flaps and the spoilers. Firstly, what are secondary flight controls? Secondary flight controls are used to change the lift and drag characteristic of the aircraft or to provide assistance to the primary flight controls. They consist of high lift devices, 
such as flaps as well as flex spoilers and trim systems. High lift devices are generally to increase lift as a result reducing uh, stalling speed. This is basically a follow flap. It extends at the trailing edge of the wing. We modified the flap uh, mechanism from the Lockheed C-130 Hercules and redesigned it to make sure it fits the aircraft structure of our mock-up project. We designed the flap so that it shows increase in camber and wing area. This is spoilers or lift dumpers. Hinge panels located about the mid court position on the upper surface of the wing. Their function is basically to slow down aircraft during cruise and to dump lift and produce high drag after landing. This is to assist in stopping of the aircraft efficiently with the brakes. Thank you. Okay. We searched the internet and we tried to contact a few supplier stores to get information about the Umeti cylinders. We also asked for the availability and price of the components and parts of the pneumatic cylinders. Went all the way to Sungai Bolo to visit few pneumatic supplier stores to find out the right components. After we found the perfect shop, uh, we asked them for a quotation and we finalized the components and parts that we needed. Then we looked for the parts that are needed for our, to complete our project and we ordered them. We also asked the supplier to give his opinion to improvise our design. Actually, we ordered four pneumatic cylinders, two selector valves, silencers, speed controls, union T, elbow sockets, and pneumatic tubings. Our hangar officer actually helped us to complete our project by providing us with the pressure gauge and metal sheets. How we build and how it functions. So basically the flaps, for the flaps, it is supported with uh, bearings that are attached on two sides of this rod and each rod is holding the surface of the flap and uh, the bearings are, made, are placed on the self-made flap that we built on both sides of the flaps and the piston end of the cylinder is attached to the center of the leading edge of the flaps surface for retraction and extension of the flaps Speed control circuits are placed on both inputs of the double acting cylinder and uh, we also lubricated the bearings to allow for smoother movement of the flap so it prevents it from getting stuck in its extension and retraction process okay as for the spoiler we have a thick sheet of metal used to create the spoiler control surface we have one end of the spoiler connected to a piston cylinder while the other end connected to the frame structure. As for the pneumatic cylinder, we have only supply to one end as the other end is compensated by the, the weight of the spoiler itself. And we also have uh, speed control sockets connected to one end which is the inlet side to slow down the, the extension of the spoilers. What are the problems and challenges that we face in this project. Our initial idea was using hydraulics, but hydraulic cylinder was too expensive and only used for heavy duty projects. We complete the sketching of hydraulic lines network diagram. We wasted a lot of time waiting for the fabrication team to complete their work on the aircraft structure and measurements. We need to make sure of our flaps and spoiler structure fits the wing structure, which require a lot of remeasuring and improvisation. We have problems keeping the bearings on track. It runs out of track whenever we extend or retract the flaps. How did we overcome these problems? We decided to change to pneumatics. We modified the lines network diagrams, sketching, and a few improvisations to fit the pneumatic system properties. We discussed with the fabrication team to finalize the measurements clearance and the availability for us to start constructing our flap and spoiler surface. Plus, we had a washer on both ends of the bearings to make sure they do not run out of track. Hi, my name is Klaus and then I'm the leader of the electrical team. So now, let me introduce my 
team members to everyone. Uh, my name is Meng Yun Yong. My name is Ting Jun Hong. My name is Vinish Raj. My name is Joe Kwan. Okay, uh, I'm the leader of the electrical team. So now I'm going to introduce you about my electrical part in this project. So first, I'm going to talk about the aircraft lightning system. Aircraft lightning systems provide the illuminations for many operations, such as operation at night and also operation at the bad weather when the light is very dim. Our project uses micro switch and light bulbs when the flight control move and it will trigger the micro switch. So we need a system to indicate and give visual sign for the flight control. The system provides some sort of indications to tell the flight crew that the flight control is moving to correct position and not only that, it also gives the flight crew some indication when the flight control is faulty. We use the knowledge that had been taught to us to build the system. That's all for me. I will talk about how and where we get the resource. First of all, we had a basic knowledge of how we get, how to buy the components all from outside. And because we have buy, buy a lot of components for previous project, and that's thanks to our lecturers to bring us this idea to buy more components. So first we bought the, uh, I mean we find the resource from online and offline. Through online is we find from WhatsApp, uh, online uh, website, website and we emailed some shops. We bought few components from Lazada and Shopee. We bought it from there and we get it within uh, one week or one and a half week or that. So because of the insufficient component, we went through offline. So we went to Pudu. Uh, which is located in Cal. We went there and bought few components there, like the micro switch, the bulb, and a few components more. So that's the resource we found on that. And we also get some guidance from our hangar officer, the shop owner, so how to create our circuit and improve it. So. To build and install the lightning system and the indication system, uh, we took 3-pin switch and 9 volt 3 ampere transformer and bridge rectifier, capacitor and emergency stop switch and circuit breaker. And some more 12 volt DC light and indication lights. So we use uh, transformer, capacitor and bridge rectifier to convert the external power of AC supply to 12 volt DC supply. We use micro switch and light for indication for the primary and secondary control surface movement uh, detection. And for external lightning, we use 3 pin switch and uh, 9 volt light with color of uh, green, red and white. For safety emergency, stop switch and circuit breaker are used to stop current when emergency and when the current leaks. Thank you. The problem we face in our project is a wiring connection in the soldering because sometimes the circuit is not working, it depends on that. So we need to spend a lot of time to find out the problem and solve it. The next is the micro switch because we need to find the face suitable for the switch to make it work. Then we solve the problem by asking the advice and method from the lecturer and also find from the internet to solve the problem. After that, we before we do the circuit, we got to do the demo to test the circuit, make sure it's working. And after the circuit is work, everything is done, we build our own circuit. After that, we test the circuit by do the experiment. When the circuit not working, we use the multimeter to check the continuity one by one on the circuit and check the wiring. Throughout the entire project, we have learned a lot of knowledge and skills which enables us to develop our skills and prepare for our future. We learn to manage our time well by, by dedicating the job accordingly to everyone of us. Besides that, we, we, we learn to, to work as a team as we realize many hand mix lighter work. We learn to understand more components of their usage and their functions. We have also learned a lot of skills such as wiring, soldering and so on. These enhance our abilities in electrical part.